someone's story, you only see the glory. Right. You see everything, the cars, the money, et cetera, et cetera, but you don't know what that person has gone through yeah. to get to that point. So for you, what was that moment when you were sitting in you know, your house or wherever you're at in Kansas City and you're like, I need to go, I need to do this. What was that moment? Well, that moment for me is a, it's a rather, um, it's a rather shocking moment. And uh, one I don't talk about all that often, but I was, uh, I had a drug problem as well. And uh, I had hit real, real rock bottom and I had taken my own life. And, um, and I was brought back um, in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Uh, and I realized that uh, something had to change. Mm -hmm. and, um, I didn't know what it was going to be. And I actually worked in medicine for a few years after that while I was uh, pursuing comedy. And comedy for me was an outlet to talk about my depression, to talk about my anger, to talk about all of those issues and relate to people with them instead mm -hmm. of hiding them and being afraid of them. Um, but yeah, so I did comedy for several years, like just completely under the radar doing, you know, bars and whatever open mics I could find until mm -hmm. I really found myself. It wasn't until um, four years after my suicide that I actually picked up and left. But I knew probably right away that things had to change. Okay. And I took about two years of like figuring things out, staying in the medical field and then quit everything. And I was like, nope, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pursue it 100%. And it, and for me, like when I commit to something, I'm in it. <laughs> Even mm -hmm. if I'm mentally or financially probably not ready for it, if I've said I'm going to do it, if my word is my bond and I will do it. <laughs> and well, that's, that's just my mindset. I think that's the mindset, I mean, that because, and, I, and this is the thing is what I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny that you named the start of your podcast raw. And that's what yeah. I love about you is because you're going to get a raw realness and truth. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's no faking. There's no hiding behind in a sense. What I, I, I say it didn't take coronavirus for yeah. people to start wearing masks. I think people yeah. mask oh. all fucking day. And now that. <laughs> they're all seeing in a sense, number one, the reality, because again, it's like when you are outspoken, mm -hmm. uh, Opinion, and it's not even, I think, even opinionated because I think that we should be allowed to be able to speak our minds freely yeah. as long as we're not doing them in a disrespectful way that yeah. people don't understand. Like, words are as dangerous as a bullet to some yeah. people. And yeah. when you have gone through what, just like you, just like me, I mean, as I said, I, I am a suicide survivor myself as well. And I know when you hit that, that bottom space, it's not something that you even plan, think about. You just have a psychological break that you're just yeah. like, I don't even know what I'm but doing. In the pain. In That's the pain. That's all that matters. And yeah. if you're lucky to come out from the other side, yeah. you have a choice. You know, yeah. you have a choice to either say, okay, I'm going to stay in this place. Stay in and the life that made me this miserable. Miserable. Or you make a change. And yeah. it was like me. I mean, I, I went through those phases. I went through, you know, criminal phases, per se, being in a gang. And I, and I remember the same thing of like, you know, there's something has to change, and it's not going to be changed by anybody else. I mean, and, and, yeah. and the best part, I think, about when you go through something, what you have gone through, so people write you off. Because oh, yeah. now it motivates you. Now it fuels you to say, you know what? You knock me down, yeah. but I'm going to show you exactly that I can do this and yeah. I can do it not without your help. I can do it because I'm doing it for me. So like for you, you know, going through, as you said, you know, uh, a drug problem and, and, and a suicide. I mean, what did you did you find for yourself that was the lowest point in your life that you've experienced? You know, I've had a lot of lows. I mean, honestly, I feel like everybody's life. I don't feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm alone in saying this. I feel like everybody's life hits those dramatic highs and dramatic lows, and <laughs> and I've definitely hit a few. And 
I've hit a few since being in Los Angeles. You know, when I did have my, my I was homeless for a year. Mm -hmm. And when I was homeless, I, I was definitely in a bad point of my career as well. I was doing things that I would have never thought I would do in my career. And I was, and I was doing them and I was doing them on camera. And, and I just didn't have the respect for myself. I think I let what everybody else was saying about me get into my brain. And then I started thinking that about myself and I was like, mm -hmm. well, nothing matters. You know, I'm just this low level life. But I think that's what I also respect about porn is when I started respecting myself that because people had put me at such a low level. I mean, people like take away your identity as a human when you get into pornography. I mean, they don't even associate you as a person any longer. You've made this decision to be the laughing stock of the world and that's your fault. You know, mm -hmm. That's what I love about it is that it did rip away everything from me. It ripped away any eliteness I thought I had it ripped away my college education, not that it took it away, but people don't assume I have it and they don't, mm -hmm. you know, they don't give it any legitimacy, legitimacy. I mean, people took everything away from me. And so now I feel like, well, I've got nothing to hide. You can literally see my asshole on the internet. Like good luck finding a secret. I have none. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about everything in my life. I've talked about my suicide. I talk about, um, STDs. I talk about literally everything. There's nothing in my life that has gone wrong that I wouldn't tell the world. And it's well, such a nice feeling to have no secrets. Well, to be because you're, you, 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 I mean, you, you, what I call in a sense, number one is that you, you let yourself be free to tell your, your truth, your truth yeah. of who you are. And I think that you know, I, I had a conversation with somebody because, I mean, as I said, I mean, I've worked in that, not as a performer, but on the other end of the, of the business of the film, adult and film industry. And, you know, the one thing that I learned real quickly in the sense of where people who have gotten into the business, you know, because, of course, there's the fans that see you and they see what you do. Right. But they don't seem to forget one, there's a real person there that yeah. a lot of times, for example, like people think that like where this is, this is all they do, just fuck all day. Like they don't yeah. think of it as a job. They don't think, of they it like, think like, I walk it, into rooms and just start sucking, sucking cock. Like I can't contain myself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So like for, for you, yeah. like, you know, getting into the industry, because I mean, as I said, everyone sort of has a story. And I mean, and, and a, uh, a guest that I had on Amber Nicole Miller, you know, she talked to me about, people who are in the industry as well, that everyone, I think, who gets into the industry didn't wake up and said, I want to be an adult film star. They right. always, you know, she, she said that, you know, that a lot of it comes from that person's trauma that they experienced possibly in the earlier parts of their life, that if they didn't experience the trauma that they've gone through, they probably would have gone on a different path. So for you, like getting into the adult industry, was that something that you felt you got into based on trauma or was it something that you were like, okay, I was either already a sexual person, so I might as well get paid for it. Or C, was it something where you're like, as I've said to people, whether you strip, whether you, work in a strip club, whether you're a porn star, whatever you do, you know, nobody should tell you or be able to tell you how you go about making your living. And yeah. if you're in a situation where you ain't got no family support, you ain't got no friend support, you ain't got no sugar daddy support, you do what you got to do to survive. So for you, yeah. like, what was the thing that made you get into the industry? I'd say for me, a, a good portion of, of B, for sure. Um, I had a girlfriend who had gotten into the industry right before I did. And okay. she was one of the girls who, like, the day I met her, she was like, oh, I just always really wanted to do porn. Like, she even told me when she met me, she was like, oh, I just think you're so beautiful. I really want to fuck you. And I was like, I'm not into girls, but thank you. <laughs> um, and then lo and behold, a few years later, um, she was my first porn and she did fuck me and she got everything she ever wanted. Um, uh, but for me, 
it was, I was working two jobs here in Los Angeles. I was working uh, for a construction company during the day and I was working bartending at night and I wasn't doing any comedy because I was just trying to stay afloat because it was so okay. expensive. And I saw her ba make a bunch of money in a one week and I was like, if I could just do a little bit of porn, I could do comedy. And I was a super sexual person. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I had had sex with hundreds of people before I got into pornography. Now, granted, mm -hmm. I was 30 when I got into porn, but I'm saying hundreds of men I have had sex with prior to pornography. I was very much like the girl who would look for a one night stand. I used to love <laughs> one night stands. <laughs> it's less wrong. complicated, man. Less complicated. Yeah, I was definitely that girl. Um, but now, I mean, porn changed my sexual. Um, prowess in all different ways. I've only mm -hmm. gotten more sexual because I'm in my late thirties now and my sex drive is off of the fucking charts. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I was definitely sexual, but I'm more sexual now in different ways, I will say. But it was definitely not something like, I don't think I told anybody in my life that I was doing porn that went, oh, no way, they all go, okay, saw that coming. Like no one was mm -hmm. shocked by this. Like I had worked mm -hmm. shooters when I was 18. When I waited tables after leaving the medical field, I waited tables at Twin Peaks, which is a restaurant. You know, yeah, like uh, yeah. I used my looks and my sexuality my entire life. So mm -hmm. it wasn't a far stretch for me to do it on camera, you know? So I don't think it was, it wasn't out of desperation by any means because I do have a college degree and my college has job placement for the rest of my life. I just don't ever want to work in the medical field again. I don't ever want to work for someone again. So. I love being my own boss. Like, was the medical field your like your like your your passion, your first passion? Never. It so was, what was your what passion? I did to, it was comedy. Comedy okay. is the only thing I've ever felt like passionate about. You know, that I'm like I have to figure out how to make this happen. And it's interesting now too because of the pandemic. I always thought it was like stand up, stand up, stand up, stand mm -hmm. up. And now I'm like I don't really want to go do stand up in someone's fucking garage or outside at a park like I have other things going on with my my comedy and I've got a, a movie coming up I'm doing I have my own series I'm writing like I can do comedy on my podcast mm -hmm. so many different platforms that I don't have to be doing you know 10 shows a week killing myself doing Wanna... stand up making $50 a show like I don't need it you know well, here the beauty I mean the beauty about it in a sense obviously with the pandemic where you know, where you, like right now with what we're doing, like we got people from all over the world, Brazil, right. signing in. So it's like to you, right. when you use your own platform, which I've always said to people is like, now with everyone being at home on their phones, glued to their devices, you have your audience that yeah. you literally, number one, would, are getting a bigger audience where, you know, you don't have to have the, the lump in your throat before you step on stage to wonder, okay, right. like, is this audience going to turn out? Is this or... audience going to like me? <laughs> like or, me. I already know the audience likes me or they wouldn't be here. <laughs> exactly. You know, so like for you, like when you, when you first in the sense of the said, you know, got into the adult entertainment industry, was it something that like once you did it, did you ever have any regrets of getting into the business? Because you said that, you know, oh, yeah. it started off, didn't start off the way that you, Oh, I had Thought so many regrets. I, in the beginning, I used to, I would just be sitting there, like just 